Now let's talk about how cations are selected to sorb onto CEC sites. And there is some sort of rhyme and reason to this <clears throat> for the most part. So this is this is something called the lyotropic series that you see on the screen. And the lyotropic series tells you roughly how these cations will sorb preferentially, preferentially over other cations on exchange sites. Now the lyotropic series is, it's interesting because it's based on taking all these ions and putting them in the same concentration in a solution and looking at how they're sorbed. That's never the case in soils. Nonetheless, this lyotropic series tells you information about how these ions preferentially sorb over other ions or cations. Okay, so here's the lyotropic series on the top of the screen. And what this tells you is how each one of these cations sorbs as compared to the following cation. And so way here on over here on the left, aluminum plus three sorbs very strongly and sodium sorbs rather weakly. And then there's something called the hydrated radius. This is the amount of waters that are surrounding these ions. And how this lyotropic series is generated is based on something called charge density. So the strength of adsorption of each one of these cations is based on charge density. It's the amount of charge per hydrated radius, okay? And so let's keep this conversation relatively simple. Bullet point number one states that aluminum plus three is adsorbed more strongly than calcium because aluminum plus three has a higher valence and therefore a higher charge density. Meaning there is more charge within the hydrated radius of aluminum as compared to calcium, right? Calcium is a hydrated radius of 0.96, so it's a bit larger than aluminum. And Aluminum is plus three, so there's more charge in the aluminum for attraction to cation exchange sites than there is calcium. That's why aluminum falls out to the left. Another good example would be aluminum as compared to, say, ammonium. They both have very similar hydrated ionic radiuses, but aluminum has a plus three charge. So in this circle for aluminum, there's three plot positive charges and the same roughly same diameter or radius for ammonium, the charge is plus one. So aluminum is gonna be preferentially sorbed over ammonium. Bullet point number two, one would think that smaller cations of similar charge are absorbed more strongly than larger cations, but smaller cations having a greater charge says charger, charge density, attracting more water molecules and making their hydrated radius larger. Thus, they are not sorbed as strongly. And here's two good examples. So if we look at calcium versus magnesium, on the periodic table, magnesium has an atomic weight of 24 and calcium has an atomic weight of 40. So calcium is directly below magnesium on the atomic or periodic table in row number two on the left-hand side. So you would think that magnesium would be preferentially sorbed over calcium, but that's not the case according to the lyotropic series because the smaller size of magnesium attracts a little bit more water than does calcium. And so the charge density of calcium is just a little bit bigger than magnesium, and thus calcium is preferentially sorbed over magnesium, just by a little bit. Another good example is potassium versus sodium. Both plus one charges, they're in the first row on the left-hand side of the periodic table. Potassium is directly below sodium. Sodium has an atomic weight of 23, potassium is 39. So this is a smaller ion right? By itself, it's a smaller ion, but it attracts more water than potassium, as illustrated by this hydrated radius. And so 
the charge density is less on sodium than potassium. And so potassium is preferentially sorbed over sodium. Okay. And then you're going to find, if you stay in soil sciences, that there's always exceptions to rules. And the exception to the rule here is hydrogen. Hydrogen is really unique. And look where it is on the lyotropic series. It's almost all the way over to the left. It is the smallest, it's the smallest element, right? It's it's number one on the periodic table, top left-hand corner. But it's it's very small in size and it has no water hardly at all around it. Look at the hydrated ionic radius, 0.1. It's the smallest of all. So the charge density is really great and therefore it's preferentially sorbed on exchange sites over many of the other cations. So if you can keep this concept, <coughs> excuse me, of the lyotropic series in mind, you can understand how fertilizers will or will not work. So let me show you some pictures. Here is potassium deficiency in cotton. Right. And so to overcome this deficiency, what would you do? You likely would add potassium fertilizer. Now, if you didn't know what you were doing, you would just add potassium fertilizer and hope for the best. You wouldn't even have a recommendation. You'd just go and sprinkle it out within this cotton field. Well, somebody actually did that. I don't know if this was a study or if this was an oops, but this cotton leaf on the left was before. And this cotton leaf was after potassium fertilization. And so you think about, OK, why did this not overcome the deficiency? Why didn't my fertilizer application overcome the deficiency? Oh, I remember I took ENR 5270 and there was something called the lyotropic series. And potassium was way on the right of the lyotropic series. Maybe there's some other elements on the exchange sites that are preventing potassium from kicking those, ex those elements off of the exchange sites. Maybe there's aluminum, maybe there's hydrogen, maybe there's calcium. And I didn't add enough potassium to overcome the attraction of those elements with potassium. And that's likely what happened in this case. Here's another example. This is radish that's suffering from a magnesium deficiency. And so there's magnesium deficiency on the left before somebody added some Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. And one week later, the plants are starting to clear up. It takes a little bit of time, but it, it, it is overcoming the deficiency by adding this fertilizer. And if you think about the lyotropic series, the problem with this soil was there was too much calcium and not enough magnesium. And so to overcome that deficiency, if you added just enough magnesium to kick some of the calcium off of the exchange sites. You can replace calcium with magnesium and then you have a buffer or a source of magnesium to feed the plants. And this is exactly what happened. And this was not that difficult to overcome because calcium and magnesium on the lyotropic series are almost right next to each other. So if you keep the lyotropic series in mind as you move forward when you're using fertilizers to overcome deficiencies, it could be helpful.